Kwea Mirabilis Pachi. Gloria Patria Filio Spiritu Santo, Sipu Dara de Sipitio, en Luca Sempe, et in Circula Seculorum. Amen. Amen. Signo Magnum, Aparit in Cello, Molia Atica Sola, et Luna Sol Pedibus, Eius et in Catire, in Catite Eius, Corona Stella, Idu Duodeci. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christ eleison. Kyrie eleison. Domnum nostrum, Jesum Christum Filium, Sancti, Sancti, 
Jum Tu Hum, Vita Convivita Rekniani Spiritu Sancti Deus, Eromnia Secula Seculorum. Au de filia et vide et inclina aurem tuam et con cupicel rex ho priutudinem tuam. Oda decora ingreditu filia regis texture aure sunt Oda decora in gratitù filia regis texture aurea sunt amicus eius. Alleluia, alleluia. Azumta est Maria in celum. Gaude et petitus in delorum. Alleluia.
Dominus Vobisco. Assumption of Our Lady, uh, 
and uh, <clears throat> please do something of Our Lady. We have the first Mass of Father Moses uh, here in uh, Makuri in Nigeria. In the Epistle for this Holy Feast, the Assumption, taken from the book of Judith, chapter 13. Lord has blessed thee by his power, because by thee he hath brought our enemies to naught. Blessed art thou, O daughter, by the Lord the Most High, God, above all women upon the earth. Blessed be the Lord who made heaven and earth, who directed thee to the cutting off the head of the prince of our enemies. Because he hath so magnified thy name this day, that thy praise shall not depart out of the mouth of men, who shall be mindful of the power of the Lord forever. For, thou, for that thou hast not spared thy life by reason of the distress and tribulation of thy people, but hast prevented our ruin in the presence of our God, thou art the glory of Jerusalem, thou art the joy of Israel, and the honor of our people. And the gospel. Take that according to St. Luke, chapter 1. At that time Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost, and she cried out with a loud voice, and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me, that the mother of my Lord should come unto me? For behold, as soon as the voice of, my, of thy salutation sounded in my ears, the infant in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed art thou that, 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 that hast believed, because those things shall be accomplished that were spoken to thee by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit doth rejoice in God my Savior. Because he hath regarded the humility of his handmaid, for behold, henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. Because he that is mighty hath done great things unto me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is from generation unto generation to them that fear him. That's for the words of today's holy gospel. Considerations on this occasion of the first Mass of the new priest, and today the Feast of the Assumption of Our Lady. You know that today's feast is a very good example that our faith never changes. Pope Pius XII, in 1950, less than 100 years ago, defined a dogma of the faith, that the Blessed Virgin Mary was assumed into heaven. But on the day of her death, when she was 15 years after the, resur after the death and resurrection of our Lord and his ascension into heaven, 15 years later, she was assumed into heaven. She was about 60 years old. And Our Lady, she was perfectly young. She never grew old. She never received wrinkles. She never had any back pain. She never had any kind of, of deterioration because she was conceived without original sin. The reason why we die and grow old is because we have original sin inside of us. But the Blessed Virgin Mary, she did not have original sin inside of her. She was perfectly preserved, immaculate, perfect, and clean from the very first moment of her conception. And therefore, she was not subject to die. She could stay on this earth for 2,000 years if she wished and be perfectly healthy and perfectly young and never grow old. 
but she decided to imitate her son. And after 15 years, just like her son died out of love for us, so she died out of love for us and love for her son. And then her body and soul, like a magnet, was pulled up into heaven, it was assumed up into heaven, and she climbed up into the air, just like the blessed, just like our Lord Jesus Christ did on Ascension Thursday. On Ascension Thursday, our Lord went up into the air and was received into the clouds. And he went all the way up into heaven. And the apostles looked up and they saw our Lord Jesus Christ go up into heaven. So Mary, his holy mother, 15 years later, with St. John the Apostle, and at the time there were about five apostles still alive, they watched her go up into the kingdom of heaven. And her body went up into heaven so that she would be next to Christ. And right now the body of the Blessed Virgin Mary is in the Empyrean heaven at the very top of the universe. Her soul and her body are together. And they were lifted up into heaven so that the people there who saw her die, when she fell asleep, she just simply closed her eyes and died. She had a true death, but she died of love. She died in imitation of her son, and she did not die because she had to die. She did not have to die. Then she was taken up into heaven, and the apostles watched her go up in heaven on this August 15th, almost uh, 2,000 years ago. And the church celebrated her assumption from the very beginning of time, from the very beginning, the apostles spoke of it. St. Thomas the Apostle was in India when Our Lady went up into heaven. He was not near her. And so Our Lady, when she went up into heaven, she came over on her journey up, she went and made a detour to India. And she took off her sash and she gave it to Thomas. And Thomas watched her go into heaven, and the other apostles watched her go into heaven, and the people with her watched her go into heaven, and they knew that she was assumed into heaven. They began to celebrate the feast of the Assumption all the last 2,000 years. And then in 1950, Pope Pius XII defined a dogma of the church that all Catholics must believe in order to be Catholic. They must believe that Mary truly was assumed into heaven. Now why did he define this almost 2,000 years later? The church defines dogmas for us to believe whenever there are heretics, whenever there are liars who deny the teaching of Christ and the apostles. So when there are heretics, when there are liars denying the teaching of Christ and the apostles, then the Pope is supposed to stand up and say, you must continue to believe as our ancestors believed. You must teach as our ancestors taught. There is no new dogma. There is no change of dogma. Now the modernist heretics will tell you this. The assumption became a dogma of the church in 1950. So, in 1949, if you did not believe that Mary was assumed into heaven, then you could be a good Catholic. But in 1950, you had to believe. 
This is what the modernists teach. They are liars, they are heretics. Their church teaching has always been the same. The only reason that we sometimes have a definition of dogma is to stop people from turning away from the faith that was already given to us. You may have missiles. We have old missiles here. Very often, I am in the Philippines on this day, August 15th. Almost every year for the last 10 years, on this day, I have been in Maasin, Leyte, in the Philippines. And there we have an old missile, a missile that was printed in 1950. And the missile was printed before the Pius XII made the dogma that there is a dogma of our faith that Mary was assumed into heaven. You know what it has on August 15? It says, the Assumption of Mary. It was printed before they wrote the dogma. And there was a different epistle and a different gospel. And it was the same feast. When Pius XII defined the dogma, he kept the same feast that we already had, August 15, the Assumption. 1,000 years ago, a priest went up to the altar and he celebrated the Mass of the Assumption on August 15. But it was not yet defined. St. Thomas Aquinas taught that Mary was assumed into heaven. The apostles saw her become assumed into heaven. And they told their children, their spiritual children, and they passed on to each generation the truth that Mary, the mother of God, was assumed into heaven. And we celebrate the Feast of the Assumption, and every Catholic knows and believes that she was assumed into heaven. But the modernists will tell you, in 1949, we didn't know if she was assumed into heaven because the Pope didn't define it yet. But in 1950, now we know. So now we have more dogmas than we had before. And this is a lie. We never have more dogmas. We believe the same teachings that Christ and the Apostles gave to us 2,000 years ago, and we maintain them to this very day. The Assumption was the last dogma that was defined by our Holy Mother, the Church, only because of the liars who denied it in the 20th century. And the same is true of all other doctrines. We believe what our Holy Mother Church teaches and has always taught. We believe what the Apostles teach and have always taught. This is the dogma of our faith, handed down from generation to generation. And today, the Feast of the Assumption, we celebrate the harvest. This is the time when in most places in the world, we are gathering together the wheat, and gathering together the food in order to be able to survive the winter. And if we don't gather together enough food, we will die in the winter. So we have the, have the harvest feast of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the completion of the work of the redemption of our Lord, where we know that her body and soul are in heaven right now. We also know that every one of us who dies the friend of God, even if we must spend many years in purgatory, burning up and cleansing the soul of our sins, we know that our body, my body here, this physical body, 
is going to be united to my soul perfectly intact in the kingdom of heaven if I die the friend of God. As we've already mentioned many times, when I was consecrated a bishop, the bishop asked me, that was consecrated me, do you personally believe all the teachings of the church? The church has always taught the same truth. But does every priest believe? No. The church has always taught the same doctrine. But does every bishop believe? Absolutely not. There are many bishops that are heretics. They're called the bishops of the diocese. These are the bishops throughout the world. There are many bishops who do not believe what Christ taught. And the church knows this. So therefore, when a priest is being consecrated a bishop in the traditional rite, the bishop that is consecrating says, do you personally believe, do you, Joseph Pfeiffer, do you personally believe every teaching of our Holy Mother, the Church? And I stand up, kneeling down, I stand up and say, yes, I believe. And the final question is, do you, Joseph Pfeiffer, do you believe that your physical body, this body right here, is going to rise from the dead? is going to be lifted up before God and is going to be reunited to my soul. Do you believe this? And standing up from kneeling down, I say, yes, I believe. I know that the body of myself and the body of every one of you here, our bodies are going to be assumed. They are going to be taken up. They are going to be brought to the Valley of Josephat in Israel. Some bodies are going to be on the right side of our Lord. And many, many bodies are going to be on the left side of our Lord. And every single body will be perfectly intact. Every body will be at the perfect age of 33 years. Every body will be in perfect health. There will be no sick bodies either on the left or on the right of our Lord. And every body shall be reunited to his soul. Your body shall be reunited to your soul. My body shall be reunited to my soul. And those that are the friend of God, they shall be on the right side of our Lord Jesus Christ. And those that are the enemies of God shall be on the left side of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he will say to those on his right, Come to me, beloved of my Father, and they shall be eternally happy in heaven. He shall say to those upon his left, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire. And the perfectly intact body of all the damned shall go straight down into the center of the earth, about 6,000 kilometers beneath, beneath my feet. 6,000 kilometers below is where the center of hell is. It's a physical place. You can pull out your measuring tape and measure it. It's in the very center of the earth. And it is a hot and dark fire that burns there. And every single body of the damned shall be pushed down into that place in hell and crushed together without one centimeter of space between them. You know that all bodies on earth, there are now about 7 billion people on earth. And if you took all the 7 billion bodies and crushed them together without any gap, it would take up an area of about 2 kilometers wide by 2 kilometers tall by 2 kilometers long. That's all. You could fit every single body in Markuti all crushed together, all burning in heat. The damned don't take up very much space. But their bodies shall be lifted up, and their bodies shall be reunited with the soul. And then they shall be 
The earth shall be opened just like it was in the days of the sons of Korah. And their bodies shall be going down to the very center of the earth. And then it shall be closed and they shall be crushed together and burning in fire. And they will not be able to move one pinky, one finger. They won't be able to move an eyelash. They'll be crushed one against another and burning completely in fire. The body perfectly intact. Meanwhile, the just, they should also have their bodies perfectly intact. And do we not die? The friends of God, our body, my body, and your body, and the body of all of the just, shall walk upon this same earth, but in perfect health, in perfect freedom, we'll be able to move anywhere in the universe, wherever we want. And the soul will look at God at all times, and we will be a community of the elect. It will be the church triumphant. The Blessed Virgin Mary, she is the first one waiting for us body and soul, assumed into heaven. And she goes wherever she wants. Sometimes she comes down here to earth to appear to some souls in different times. But she is always wherever she wants to be. And she is always near her son. And today is a great feast of this miracle of the Assumption. What is the duty of the priest? To prepare souls for the harvest. You are going to live forever. Where are you going to live forever? Either crushed with all the damned in a compact place in the center of the earth, dark and forgotten and burning forever because you did not live according to the law of God and according to his true faith or with all the saints and the Holy Mother who was assumed into heaven on this day. She will always be our mother. She will always be before our eyes. We'll always see the beauty of Mary. We want to be assumed as she was. We want to have our bodies and souls with Christ in heaven. And that means we must live according to his law now. The duty of the priest is to teach souls to prepare for the harvest. The Lord Jesus Christ said, The harvest indeed is great. There are so many souls ready to be reaped, ready to be gathered into my barn, says our Lord. But the laborers are few. There are not enough laborers to bring souls into the kingdom of heaven. Pray to the Lord of the harvest that he send many laborers into the harvest. And this is why it is such a great day when a new priest is ordained who will have the faith to be a laborer in the harvest, to bring souls to God, to prepare for the harvest that our bodies and souls may also be united perfectly and go up into the kingdom of heaven and to be in the valley of Josephat at the end of the world on the right side of our Lord. And this the church has always taught. He will come to judge the living and the dead and the souls and bodies will be all together. And there is no new teaching, no new dogma in our church. So let us stay faithful to the true teaching of our church. And remember also today you get a great grace to be able to attend the first mass of a new priest. And so you try to receive your Holy Communion today as if it is your first Holy Communion. And try to get as much grace as possible from the mass today. And those who did not receive a first blessing yesterday, if you missed the kissing the hands of Father Moses, if you missed receiving the blessing yesterday, then you can receive the blessing today and for the first year of his priesthood he can give the new blessing the first blessing of a new priest to anyone who has not yet received it and at the end of the mass we will then immediately after the mass is concluded 
will come up for the sacrament of confirmation. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.